this high unemployment by doing something ourselves. Now, Easter House, I think, is the sort of area where that's been beginning to develop, isn't it, Chris? Um, we're not just developing community business or community activities anywhere. We're talking about uh, through drama, art, or through communications, whatever. If you can tap those talents, then maybe you're helping people develop confidence. Confidence to perhaps tackle other aspects of their lives. The Festival Society is not a luxury, a mere hobby. It involves people, thereby giving them the strength and the will to get involved more generally. Good evening. Tonight's programme concerns joyriders who live in Divis Flats, Belfast's empty and rotting churches, Irish Catholic bishops speaking to each other but not to the press, and the prospect of the world ending with a bang. It's about religion, trying to show that it's more a way of life. First, a disturbing report from West Belfast. Joyriding, the practice of stealing cars, driving them at high speed through poorly lit city streets, crashing through roadblocks and into buildings, has cost 10 lives since 1969. Last year, three people died. The Divis Flats are a dark scar on the Falls Road skyline. Overcrowding, poor sanitation, chronic unemployment and 13 years of anarchy have produced the appalling conditions in which 2,000 flat dwellers have to live. You don't see many cars around the Divis. The cautious stay clear. And those that find parking space here are usually dumped by the joyriders who operate from these flats. Joyriding has become a major social problem. The youngsters who steal cars escape from the monotony of life here by driving them through army and police checkpoints. So what makes them do it? I've been joyriding about three and a half years now. And I've uh, been joyriding since I was 14. So I've up to 17 now. It's all right because it's boring down here and you have nothing no really to do. And uh, we're just stalling about. Sometimes we got no food to drink. Sometimes that's a really most of possible. That's how we go down and steal the cars. Most of the time, I feel fear, no. When you're driving, you're looking everywhere, no. Looking for brits or pillars or something. Your nerves are away and you're sitting juking everywhere, so you're scared. Kids are coming to a checkpoint or something, shut it. Coming down, spring free load. We would shut it. We were just driving down. And we seen a, a brit, no, waving his in. And just drove on by. And they knocked him down. And just started to shoot at us. Back when these and all fell in, glass hitting us everywhere. Thought we were all hit. When we leave the cars, it's mostly the kids, mostly at the wrecks of cars, they want to joyride too. And they're trying to learn to drive, and they're pressing them in the walls. These youngsters gave up joyriding some time ago, but others have sprung up to take their place. And some haven't scrupled to pay younger boys 50 pence to lie along the back windows of the cars to take any bullets which may be fired by soldiers and police as they break through their checkpoints. Since 1969, over 100 people have been injured as a result of joyriding. Last year alone, three died. And it was statistics like these which persuaded the local curate, Father Pat Buckley, that it was time for someone to take action. It's been very serious for a good number of years now. It's been a little less serious recently but uh, two years ago, during the hunger strike time, we had anything up to 14 and 15 cars a night in here. Uh, at the present time, we will be down to maybe five or six per week. So, but it's still a very, very serious problem. How serious is the threat to life? Well, the threat to life is very great. Uh, people have been killed in West Belfast in the last few years, joyriding. Uh, joyriders themselves have been shot <clears throat> by the army and by the police. Um, they themselves have knocked people down and kill people on the street. And we've had occasions here in Divis where cars have in fact crashed through the walls of flats, like this flat you can see here in, in the distance. And that particular night a car went in through the wall and hit a, ch a child's bed. So the threat to life is, is very, very great. And what steps have you been taking recently to alleviate the problem? Well, I think we're constantly trying to do things to attract the attention of the young people, to, to get them away from joyriding. And we have tried to organize trips for them. And we are at the present time organizing a special type of youth club situation, which we hope will be open late enough at night to attract them away from joyriding. Um, 
So we'll hope to call this the, the Joyrider's Rest or something like that. And uh, it'll be open roughly from 8 at night until 2 in the morning. And uh, hopefully that it'll attract them away from the joyriding. And you're operating a sort of tow-away service as well? Uh, well, I don't like to have to admit that because to tow a car away means it has been destroyed. And in the last year and a half, we have taken over 100 cars away by being able to drive them away. And we've only had to tow away a couple. Uh, and we would prefer to get them before they're damaged. How do you get them before they're damaged? Well, I have managed to get myself some skeleton keys. And normally when a car comes into the district, some of the, ch the young people let me know it's here. And I go out and start it and take it away. What is the attitude of the police and the residents towards your activities? Well, the residents are very happy about it because obviously it removes the danger from the area and also they don't want burned out and wrecked cars in the district. So they're very happy about it. And the police, I'm sure, are happy about it too because they're not in a position in a place like Divis to come in and take the cars away themselves. They, they feel too vulnerable. And in fact, the owners of the cars often refuse to come and pick them up here. So I think everybody is happy about it. Why do you think there is a joyriding problem in Divis? I think joyriding, like all of the other problems in places like Divis, uh, is a symptom. And I think there's a more basic disease here. Uh, things like uh, atrocious housing, very, very unjust situation. Uh, we have 60 or 70 percent of our young people unemployed. And uh, I think when you have situations like that, you have the recipe for trouble immediately. During Christmas week, the electricity supply into Divis failed. The disposal chutes servicing the flats became completely clogged up and caught fire. Joyriders went about their business as usual. At least one of the cars they took will end up on the rubbish heap. But one man doesn't want to leave this area. Father Buckley finds his work, for the most part, exhilarating and only occasionally depressing. Perhaps it's just as well. He's unlikely to find himself redundant for the foreseeable future. Father Buckley's trying to do his best around here to stop it already. So he is. We don't really feel bad when we're taking the cars away because we were from this one. And we, we mostly get them all for him anyway. So we take them away. Art report from Ernest Ray. Balance is a necessary requirement of BBC broadcasting, and when there are two sides to a coin, we'll be trying to present the head and the tail with equal emphasis. But it can sometimes be easier to see the nature of the wood by inspecting one tree closely. Agree or not, it might make us think more deeply about the topic, which is why Houston McKelvey's here. Winston Churchill, in his last speech to his beloved House of Commons, referred to the spread of communism and the growth of the nuclear arsenals. With more than a 